Uh, what does the executive change mean for Tillery? What, what can the new hires do that their predecessors could not do for the company and its investors? Well, uh, in terms of the CFO front, um, you know, we, we recruited Mark Castaneda back in January of 2019 to do something impossible, uh, something that had never been done before, to be the first cannabis company to IPO on a U.S. exchange. And uh, Mark successfully navigated, for him it was his fourth IPO, uh, and we IPO'd uh, on NASDAQ in July of, of 2018. And so he did the job that we brought him in to do. I coaxed him out of retirement uh, to do that job. And originally it was supposed to be a 12-month gig. Uh, he's been in that role for, for 24. Uh, and so we had been looking for uh, someone to come in and fill his shoes over the course of the last, uh, over the last year. And uh, we brought in Michael Krutek, who comes to us from Pharmaca and Molson Tours, and we're excited to have him on board. We also announced a, a COO uh, hire today, John Levin, who comes to us um, from Revlon uh, and deep experience there uh, over a number of different years leading their, their U.S. market. Uh, and so I'm excited to have him on board as we see. Uh, well, how does that, how does that, excuse me, phase, Brendan, how does a uh, consumer products executive, like the gentleman from Revlon, Jonathan, how does a consumer products executive operate in your world? Do you view yourself as a consumer product? I, I do. Ultimately, uh, cannabis is a, it has a, a mix of CB, CPG uh, qualities as well as um, uh, pharmaceutical. And so in 15 countries around the world where Tilray products are available, uh, they're available in pharmacies. Uh, so all the exports we do from Portugal and Canada are in the countries where medical cannabis is legal and that product's available in a pharmacy. Uh, in Canada, uh, in terms of adult use, uh, I really see that product ultimately as a CPG product and it's it's why we see so much interest from CPG companies from the tobacco companies from the alcohol companies in in this space because it, it is disrupting their traditional business models if you look forward um, Brendan ten, 10 years from now or five years from now you pick uh, what will the revenue mix at your company be between recreational uh, use of uh, cannabis products and medicinal use <laughs> you just asked the most difficult question you can ask What's, what's knowable is there's a global growth opportunity in terms of medical. Uh, 10 years ago when I started, there were 15 countries in the world. Today there are 41 that have legalized medical. I think it goes to 80. Uh, and so there's a knowable global growth opportunity in terms of medical cannabis, uh, where we'll go from 20% of the countries to 40, 50, 60% of the countries in the world that legalize it. What's unknowable is today, uh, you know, all of this focus on cannabis over the last uh, year or two it's really about two countries, two out of 196, 1% of the countries in the world have legalized cannabis for adult use. Uh, I, I think that we'll see four to five countries over the next one to two years legalize cannabis for adult use. And what I don't know over the next 10 years is do we get to 20 countries or 40? Um, so if, I, if, I, if, if you had to hold me to a number, I would say roughly 60, 40 uh, medical to adult use, but it's really based on the number of countries. Uh, probably most importantly, the United States that legalized for adult use in that decade.